Hello, my young friends. Let me set the stage. The year was 1988. The Soviets were leaving Afghanistan. Stephen Hawkins' A Brief History of Time was released, and Guns N' Roses were filling the airwaves. An unexpected mega hit is also released, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Back in the early 80s, Disney bought the film rights to the novel Who Censored Roger Rabbit? Disney formed a partnership with Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment and director Robert Zemeckis. Zemeckis insisted on famed animator Richard Williams to take the lead. The cast comprised of Bob Hoskins as Eddie Valiant, Christopher Lloyd as Judge Doom, Charles Fleischer as Roger, and Kathleen Turner as Jessica Rabbit. The film would be unique as characters were licensed from other animation studios such as Warner Brothers. It's funny, Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny had to have the same amount of screen time and the same number of lines in the movie. But my favorite scene in the movie was the dueling pianos between Donald and Daffy Duck. Because Donald and Daffy rule. I always found those two much more entertaining than their milk toast counterparts, Mickey and Bugs. Disney ended up objecting to more of the risque parts of the movie, but Robert Zemeckis had final cut control in his contract, and the movie stayed as is. With no other choice, Disney decided to release it under their Touchstone Pictures banner. Now you're probably asking yourself, why would Disney let someone else have so much control? Well, kids, this was before the release of The Little Mermaid and the Disney Renaissance. They just wanted a big animation hit. And a hit it was. It even scored an Oscar for its achievements. Disney wisely kept the merchandising rights, and Roger popped up in parades, attractions, toys, and shirts. Obviously, a sequel was planned. Disney started to make Roger Rabbit shorts to keep him in the public eye. Roger Rabbit, the Toon Platoon, was written. So Roger discovers he's adopted from human parents at, like, age 18. Roger was never too bright. He goes to, like, L.A. to find his parents. He meets, I guess, and falls in love with Jessica. What red-blooded American cartoon rabbit wouldn't? He gets entangled in some Nazi mystery, and enlists in World War II with other Toons fighting the Axis powers. Yeah, this is true! After their heroics in stopping a missile launch to kill the Big Three at the Alta Conference, uh, that's FDR, Stalin, and Churchill, for you kids who fall asleep in class and then claim your teacher never taught it. They arrive home after the war as heroes, Roger's biological mother recognizes him from the parades. It's revealed his father is none other than Bugs Bunny, who apparently never paid child support, alimony, or even cared to see this kid. Uh, it ends with Bugs smiling, saying, Ain't I a stinker? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I like that. Yep, Spielberg and Amblin rejected it. You see, Steven Spielberg's relationship with Michael Eisner had cooled over the full ownership of the character. Spielberg wanted one of the Roger Rabbit shorts before his Disney release Arachnophobia, but Eisner said no, and he attached it to Dick Tracy instead. Disney would eventually put a Roger Rabbit short before Amblin's A Far Off Place, but that movie bombed and it seemed the relationship was more strained than ever, and he would not give his consent for even for future Roger Rabbit shorts. At the time, Spielberg was developing real World War II dramas like Schindler's List, so I don't think the whole World War II cartoons fighting Nazis angle appealed to him. He rejected it, thankfully. Another script was written, who discovered Roger Rabbit. It focused on Roger working on Broadway and vaudeville and getting his big break in Hollywood, another prequel to the original movie. Traditional animation was scrapped and a CGI test was done. Mm -hmm. 
composer Alan Menken of Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast fame even wrote a song for the movie. All the pieces needed to fall into place between Disney, Warner Brothers, any other studios that were licensing their characters, and DreamWorks, the new company that was co-founded by Spielberg. The budget was estimated to be too high, and it was already 10 years since the original movie. Would moviegoers flock to the cinemas? All parties cooled on the project, and it has never been resurrected beyond some talk and interviews. Yep, you said it, Porky. That's all, folks. In recent years, a new film was discussed that takes place in the 50s after the events of the original movie. Zemeckis and original author Gary Wolf both involved. With Bob Hoskins sadly deceased, it would have included the ghost of Eddie Valiant at one point. Ugh, sorry, Bob. Disney had little interest in making the other movie. They know their current audience. It's hard to even find traces of Roger in the parks anymore. They're not going to put in over a hundred million dollars into a character that's pretty much vanished from the public eye. And maybe that's for the best. Let Roger live in our memory in that wonderful, perfect movie and the shorts that followed. Even for a movie to have been made, it was lightning in a bottle. Every piece had to fall into place. And aren't we all lucky that it did? If you like our video, please hit subscribe. It would mean a lot to us. Catch you on the flip side, my friends.